Okay, for this problem, we have a, a cosecant. Now, problems that involve cosecants or secants, we need to actually use the reciprocal identity to convert that and change it over into either a sine or cosine because that way we have those values off of our table. So eventually we're going to have to do that on this problem. Now before we, we do that, let's first isolate cosecant. So we're going to do that by adding 3 to both sides of the equation. We get 5 cosecant x is going to equal uh, 5 by adding the 3 to both sides. Now we want to divide both sides by 5 we get cosecant x is going to equal uh, 1. Now, cosecant, again, we don't have that on our, on our table here. We want to convert that over into a sine, and we're going to use our reciprocal identity for that. So cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. So I have 1 over sine is going to equal 1, and I want to solve for sine x. I can do that by cross-multiplying. So I do that. I can write that over 1. So I get sine x equals 1 or multiply both sides by sine. Either way, I'll get sine x equals 1. Now, when I look at my table, I go down the sine column, and I see there's a 1 right there, and that corresponds to an angle of 90 degrees. That's actually this spot right here on the unit circle. That would be uh, 0, 1, x value 0, the y value is 1. Now, the thing that you want to look at is, is there any other place on the unit circle where the y value is going to be equal to 1. And if we look at that over here, that's going to be zeros for both of those. Now down here, x value is still 0, however the y value is going to equal uh, negative 1. So actually this is a case where there's actually only one angle on the unit circle uh, where that's going to be equal to 1. And that's going to be at 90 degrees or, since we have to give our answer in terms of radians, that's going to be pi over 2. So my answer for the whole problem is going to be x is equal to pi over 2, the only single answer. Okay, for this one when we solve, we, have a, we notice we have a cotangent in it, and cotangent we don't have on our table here. So in order to solve this one, we have to actually change the cotangent into a tangent. Now before we do that, we're first going to isolate the cotangent theta, and then once we solve for it, then we can apply the identity for it. Cotangent is the same thing as one over tangent, then we can use that in reference angles to get the answer. So first, let's isolate cotangent. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. Square root of 3 cotangent theta is going to equal negative 1. Now, we're going to divide both sides by square root of 3. So cotangent theta equals negative 1 over square root of 3. This is the point where we want to change this into a tangent because that way we can get a value off of our table. So we'll put in the identity for cotangent, that's 1 over tangent theta and we get this. Next, we want to cross multiply and solve for tangent. Multiply these, we get negative tangent theta is going to equal, multiply these, square root of 3. Then if we divide both sides by a negative, we get tangent theta is equal to negative square root of 3. So the square root of 3, we want to find that value on our table. And if we go down the tangent column here, we find that we get square root of 3 goes along with 60 degrees. 60 degrees is the reference angle that we're going to use here. So I need to find out which quadrants I need to draw those in. I want to find the quadrant where tangent is negative. So I'm going to use the all students take calculus rule to find that. So I do all students, signs positive, everything else is negative, which means tangent is going to be negative in the second quadrant. Take represents tangent is positive here, everything else is negative, and then over here cosine is positive, everything else is negative. So from that all students take calculus uh, sign chart, we determine that your tangent's got to be negative in the first and fourth quadrant. That's where we're going to draw our angles. So the 60 degrees that's drawn in there, that's going to be measured again. Your angle's always measured from the x-axis. So we have 60 degrees there. We're going to draw another one down here. This angle is going to be uh, 60 degrees. So 60, again, measured from the closest x-axis. It's always where you measure that from. We have to express these as an angle between 0 and 360. We don't want to use negative angles. Okay, so at this point, this is 180, straight this direction, and we're going to be going 60 degrees back in the other direction. So if we take 180 minus the 60, that's going to give us 120. So our first answer is going to be 120 degrees. The second answer, this is 360, and we're going back 60 degrees in this direction. 
So going back that way, that means that my second answer is going to be uh, 300. So I have two answers, 120 degrees and 300. So again, whenever you have something like this that's not a not a value that's on our table, you want to use one of the reciprocal identities in order to solve for it. That's what we did here. We isolated the cotangent data. We put in the identity for it, 1 over tangent. We cross multiplied. We saw that the value on our table was square root of 3, 60 degrees, and we drew it in here in the second and fourth quadrant because that's where tangent uh, is negative. That got us our two answers, 120 and 300.